Up until now, we've completely shied away from the fact that all of our equations of motion for the linear case were vector equations. And there are actually vectors when we talk about angular cases as well. So now it's important to start thinking about where do those vectors point for the angular equations of motion that we're familiar with. We've introduced our theta, our omega, and our alpha. And we know that there are connections between these things and the linear motion through the equations s is equal to r theta, v equals r omega, and a equals r alpha. Hopefully those equations will help guide us as we think about what the vector equations are supposed to be. We also know that there are these equations that help us know how to calculate the scalar quantities theta and omega. But these are still scalar things. So now we're going to try to talk about the vector nature of omega and alpha and theta. It turns out the connection is that there's a cross product. So we have to go back to our, our recollection of how cross products work. But it's not just a multiplication v is equal to omega r, but it's actually a v equals omega cross r. And the tangential acceleration is alpha cross r. As usual, there's a right-hand rule that you can do to help compute cross products. And let's examine how this works. And actually, where the cross product comes from it kind of makes sense if you start looking at uh, where some of the vectors point for the linear equations of motion. Let's imagine that we have a disk spinning with omega is constant. In other words, there's no alpha at all. It's not accelerating. And it's just uh, spinning at some constant angular acceleration. A velocity vector v points off to the, excuse me, to the right here. If I think about this thing spinning uh, counterclockwise when I look at it from above, and an r cross v would then be pointing straight up. So omega points straight up. That works no matter where you are around the disk. And I want you to imagine taking your, your fingers and curling from the direction of r over to the direction of v and getting omega. But now let's suppose that this object starts to spin faster and faster and faster. What's going to happen? Well, I might start out at some initial v naught. But then later, I'm at some speed, the velocity v prime is actually bigger in magnitude. And later still, the, v, the velocity v double prime is even bigger in magnitude. Let's imagine what's happening to the velocity vector, the angular velocity vector omega. It has to still keep pointing straight up, but it's getting bigger and bigger in magnitude because the cross product that relates um, velocity and omega can only get bigger uh, in, in magnitude for v if omega, the magnitude for it, gets bigger and bigger as well. As a result, we can actually predict what's happening to alpha. Alpha has to point straight up too. So this disk that's spinning counterclockwise when looking from above faster and faster and faster happens when an alpha vector gets bigger because alpha represents the change in omega. And if omega is getting bigger and bigger and bigger pointing up, then alpha has to point up. But now let's imagine the case what we talked about before, where alpha can sometimes be negative, representing that it's slowing down. Negative in this case means not positive in the upward direction. So let's imagine a disk that when viewed from above is spinning counterclockwise, but it's slowing and then slowing and then slowing. And in other words, the omega vector is still pointing up, but it's getting smaller and smaller in magnitude. Since alpha represents the change in omega, then it has to point down. And so it's really useful for you to build up some intuition around these different cases. When I look at a disk that's spinning counterclockwise, its omega is pointing up. And I can have three different cases for alpha. If alpha is zero, then the, the disk will be spinning at constant angular speed. If alpha is pointing up along with omega, then the disk is speeding up. And if alpha is pointing down opposite the direction of omega, then the disk is speeding, excuse me, slowing down. This is a lot like our linear cases of motion where we could have a velocity vector that's pointing forward, but an acceleration vector that's pointing backwards, and that's a case where the object is slowing down. We could also have the velocity vector and the acceleration vector pointing in the same direction, and that represents an object speeding up. So that our intuition from the linear case actually carries over quite nicely.